uh, new signal lights and, a, and a, a, a repair to the mirror. We'll see if that works. It is the 19th of June. And it's really about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so 14 hours into the day. So. I don't think my turn signals actually matter right now because I can't tell if they're working or not. But anyways. The light that's supposed to go off isn't working the way it should be working. But then again, it's just also daylight, and so sometimes you can't tell if the light is on or off uh, in bright daylight. So <laughs> that could be the issue as well. But anyways, the uh, signal device, the uh, left and right signals, have been mounted along with... Along with uh, along with uh, oh. <laughs> the uh, wireless uh, signal controller that does allows me to do left, right, you know, so on and so forth. But uh, during the daylight, the thing that's supposed to light up doesn't necessarily light up. But so. I think that's going to have to be, that will probably be an issue. The mirror seems to be holding. So that's a good thing. But it, 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 it's going to take a bit of getting used to in terms of knowing uh, what to do with the turn signal, particularly during the day at night. Not a problem because you can see the light, you can see the lights at night or, or in, in a darker air environment. It's just in the light of day that you have a hard time seeing whether the device is on or off. So this is something that I said. Just put it on now, it's gonna take me a couple of days to get used to it. Uh, but otherwise everything's working fine. The mirror seems to be holding out. It's not the key, uh, it's not turning in the way it had been before, so it's staying fixed. I can see uh, what's going on to the left of me, turns behind me. Uh, I'll go on to the light anyways. It changed too quick for me to uh, stop. Anyway, things have been going well. So I've been making, making, making these upgrades that, that came in. Uh, I've got uh, two new ear pods to try, try out and see how they work for uh, wireless communications in terms of uh, 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 if I'm, someone calls me while I'm on the road to do an auto answer. It's all hands free. It's all, all, all voice activated. Uh, I haven't fully gotten into that yet. I don't intend to do it too much because uh, I don't I don't necessarily want to depend on it. So, yeah, so basically uh, uh, the first part of our ride here, the first half, uh, is basically a little chit chat, catching up on things. I can't tell what's going on.
take me the rest of the summer to uh, fix up my notebooks and devices and everything so that I can uh, get into the next deep dive in September. That will be the uh, fundamental goal. After here, I gotta be turning on the right turn signal. Should be a single press. Okay, I got it. So I got my right turn signal on. I don't know if it's doing any good, but we will soon see. It doesn't give you an audible that it's on. It should actually give you an audible clicking. I think that would be even better. Came out a little, dressed a little warmly for the day, uh, but then again, it was cooler in my place, so uh, it's always sometimes it's difficult to tell uh, where the temperature is going to be for the day, uh, even though you see the numbers, uh, it doesn't always uh, register that that's what's going on. Uh, left turn signal. Talking about the general stuff now, just a general chit chat as we're coming along. So we'll probably ch we'll have more of a depth discussion. Get back to our topic of Lionel and the intellectual.
check the turn signal and it is working fine just in the day you can't sort of see the buttons light up so that's kind of the way things go so now we're on our way home it's up 10 o'clock still uh, uh, June 19th and there'll be some shifts at this point because uh, it's part of the unmentionable. Oh. Anyways, I got the notebooks more or less uh, set up to start. I got to start uh, building new notebooks, uh, expanded for capacity in terms of what I'm doing. Uh, it has to do with this vinyl run of Voltaire uh, sort of product that I'm working on. Uh. And ironically enough, it does cut to a certain degree into a number of the conspiracy theories, including the UFO issue, the whole thing of aliens. And how someone, I don't know, actually, let's put it this way, I know engineers, fairly good at their mathematics, who are flat earthers. So you would say, oh yeah, they're a conspiracy theory, conspiracy nut. They don't know anything. Oh, not good guess again. They have, in many cases, engineering degrees, doctoral degrees. Uh, in other words, in terms of the sense of intellect, they are well there. Uh, well, there's a bit of a clearing here. It's not so on the right, so uh, some cars move slowly, others move quickly. I do have a line. Let's see what happens. And it's the eight. I made it. Signals off. We have these interrupts for uh, issues on the road. <laughs> Their conversation. But then, you know, it, 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 this is the way the conversation sometimes go. You're driving. You do have to pay attention to your driving. You don't just simply drive and, well, <laughs> you know who. Who cares what's happening? You do have to have a sense of, well, there are certain things on the road that need your attention, and uh, that's the way it's going to go. Anyway, so... The tendency is, when someone says, and this is what uh, Lionel talks about, that, oh, they're conspiracy theorists, they're another. Well, anyone who states that, once again, states it without any degree of proof, without any degree of sort of, uh, of analysis. And this is the way, uh, uh, this level of, <laughs> of reporting, if you will, of journalism, 
It's not actually not even old because I tell you one time I go back and talk about fake news. Well, the thing is, is that a, a good study on Edward Bernays. We'll find that Edward Bernays, who is Sigmund Freud's nephew, had done exactly the same thing. That from from early on, from the time of Woodward, Woodrow Wilson, uh, he ha had his people in his uh, PR firm p placed in very respectable uh, magazines, newspapers, and they weren't really reporters; they were PR people, and they would write. The PR for the paper. So the article was not really an article, but rather an ad for a particular product or so on and so forth. Uh, but the reader never really knew about this. And then you look back at Voltaire, understanding that, that all writing had to be approved by the Crown. You understand that the, the official documents by the crown, by the government, were always heavily falsified. They were always skewed towards the favor of the government. And well, of course, you always had a free printing press, particularly in Switzerland. Or you could go to another country and print and then go out through there. But the, this is where uh, Voltaire chose to print. He chose to print in uh, Switzerland. And uh, of course, he, the word got around that he did print his work, and <laughs> he was viewed at the time as anti-establishment. And so he became popular for being anti-establishment. This is where his popularity was. popularity of being illegal or illicit to get it, bring himself even more fame because it was exciting to have somebody who was illicit at your party so that everyone would know that he was at your party and now he was the your party was the talk of the town so in other words your social gathering your salon I thought about this for the academic salons all originated in the salons of the social social they would have guest speakers come in and sort of, you know, he wouldn't just get to sort of hear him speak, but he'd also get to uh, meet the person, uh, uh, talk with them, dance with them. In other words, it was a social event around some degree of, of academic interest, if you will. And so he really became the sort of the purveyor of uh, the empty academic world, where the, the academic research, the paper, really was about nothing but designed to impress or to create the pretense that the person was an intellectual. And this is why Voltaire really didn't do his own work. He simply copied from other people and put it together, sort of like cut and paste. And this is why you had to go to Voltaire, you had to go to uh, Newton, Leibniz, uh, and there's several other mathematicians. You have to go to, and eventually also to Planck to realize that Voltaire really didn't do anything. But Voltaire became quite of a sort of a, a popular, uh, oh, let's just call it, um, usable idiot. And this is a term for if someone wants to create a, a sense of reality, a false sense of reality. He would use someone who would believe the stuff enough for the, for whatever reason it is, including for their own gain, that they would promote something that you would like, but at the same time they believe. And this was the whole concept of atheism. And this is what this is what Voltaire was about. Voltaire was about atheism. Talk about it as humanism, but actually was talking about atheism. Now this was convenient because most of the kings and queens of Europe, uh, the royalty of Europe, 
all had their their advisors, including Newton and Leibniz, who were all involved in magic. Then you'll find back in all these, uh, these so-called natural philosophers were all involved in magic. And they believed that magic was something that was parsed out, was given by God. This is their divinity, the while they were divinely chosen to rule. So they're the basis of Europe. But they also believed that the magic was limited. And you had to have certain trinkets, amulets, and so on and so forth. These are the reasons for the, for the museums. This is how you went in and stole things from other kingdoms. And then you would display them in a museum as your sort of ill-gotten gains. But you'd keep the good stuff, the good amulets for yourself. You know, in terms of the power and so on and so forth. But the thing is, if you have people that are saying, we're atheists and we don't want to believe in this stuff, oh well, great, because that means more magic for the people who do want it. So Voltaire became the sort of, if you will, the uh, pretty boy of uh, atheism. This is called, and then it was called humanism. The humanism was basically the world without God. And that we created our own destiny. The thing is, the thing is that they go back into the ancient church because they up. the early Christian church, they didn't talk about destiny, they talked about free will. And this is where some of the stuff gets a little confusing because if you only, if you only listen to the Catholic Church, they're talking about destiny. You can say things about the Protestants, they're talking about the plan. But they, that was never in the early Christian church. Yep, the early Christian church always talked about free will. They talked about the choice, they talked about the path. But the purveyors of the past, of the past, uh, were very few and far between. They didn't last that long uh, in terms of being publicly noted. But a large chunk of the uh, Eastern Empire, the Eastern Christian Church, was destroyed by the Catholics. Of course, they used the Muslims as an excuse, but the reality was the primary destruction of the Eastern Christian Church was at the hands of the West. 